Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host and producer and one-man band here on the EV Revolution Show for episode 63 as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. So this is going to be a short episode. This is really going to focus on the recent Electrify Canada grand opening and announcement that I went to a few days ago. Um, was invited uh, to attend as pressed for the launch of the first Electrify Canada station. Now for my viewers in the U.S., does, this is going to sound like much news because you guys have had Electrify America launching stations a little bit before we have, but that's a pretty important significant milestone here in Canada uh, because they are behind on the times and they finally were able to get their first uh, hub opened and uh, I've got some video about a little bit about the announcement and I've also got an interview with a couple of folks uh, from Electrify Canada and Volkswagen Group Canada so it should be interesting uh, tidbits of information so here take a look. Thank you for coming out. I'm Helen Amonez. I'm the general manager here at Toronto Premium Outlets, and I am okay. thrilled to be here uh, on another exciting day for us with this launch with Electrified Canada. Today we are celebrating the launch of our first charge of our new charging stations here on site. You can see these beautiful cars waiting for us. The addition of these charging centers is a true collaboration of what innovative partners can do and how we can change and move things forward. Uh, again, Rob Burris, I'm the COO of Electrify Canada. And really, I want to thank Laurie Ann Roxburgh and Volkswagen uh, for making this happen uh, and their commitment to, to e-mobility. Uh, Electrify Canada wouldn't exist without, uh, without Volkswagen's leadership in the space. And so this is a, a great future for, for, for everyone. And so as, as you may have seen, Toronto Premium Outlets is uh, a great location located just outside the GTA, right off the 401, which is one of the most heavily traveled highways in North America, uh, for those of you who did, did not know. Um, and it's, it's a great venue to have uh, this kind of amenity. It brings a lot to the customers. And it's just not for those that are shopping, but perhaps those who are traveling through. It's a great, great place to come and stop while you recharge on your way down west uh, and, and do a little shopping and, and keep going, or if you're coming back from vacation, right? Great, it's a pl great place to stop. And, and, uh, and so we're really trying to drive uh, awareness to zero emission vehicles uh, and, and, drive, and, and, and start the movement and really, and really foster it. And so the way we do that is we do that through infrastructure. Uh, and we're really building a different type of infrastructure that, that um, hasn't really been seen in the space uh, for a while. So what we're doing is we're, we're offering, first time in Canada, this ultra-fast charging station of 150 and 350 kilowatt charge, uh, chargers. Nowhere else in the country will you see charging stations like this. So this is a first for, for uh, Canada as well as for Toronto. So the other, the other thing we really focus on is reliability and convenience and availability. So we normally don't, don't go in and just build one, one charger uh, available to the public. We want to drive, again, that confidence that the driver needs. They want to know that if I go somewhere, there's going to be a port available for me to charge at. They want that availability. So we build all our stations with the minimum of four chargers with room to expand. And if, if when you walk around later, you'll see some, some stub ups or areas where we're all ready to, to put in extra chargers. Once the, once the demand rises and we need to expand, we're ready to do that. And we've worked with the utility to bring in extra power, so we're ready to go when, when needed. The other item we're launching today is our mobile app. There, and it's available now on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Electrify Canada is the app. 
go in a little bit deeper, once you're at the charging stations, we offer a couple different ways to pay for a charge, actually three ways. One is you can actually just go up to the station and swipe your credit or dip your credit card uh, and start to initiate a charge as you would at a, at a gasoline pump. But on the charger, it's on the uh, mobile app itself, uh, you can go ahead and uh, pick the charger and swipe to, to start the charge. Or you can actually put the credential in your Apple Wallet or your Google Wallet. And so you just hit your phone and the charge automatically starts and then you'll build appropriately. The other item we're launching today is our pricing uh, and our membership plan. So we have two, two pricing plans, what we call our Pass, pass and Pass Plus. Uh, pass is just a regular account, uh, so it's like a one-time usage uh, fee that you would pay plus your per minute rate. And the Pass Plus is more of a, 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 a monthly subscription plan you can, you can pay into. Uh, and it basically lowers the overall cost. So for our more frequent users, uh, who would like to reduce the, the, the cost of charging, uh, this is the perfect plan for them. So they can go ahead and sign up for either plan right on the app itself. So this is our first station uh, that we're building uh, and have built in, op in, in operation. We have several more sites uh, in construction today, uh, which is very exciting. So you'll be hearing a lot of news as we go into, into the end of the year about more stations coming online uh, to complete the network. Uh, we have a total of 32 that we're building, so we have 31 more to go in our first phase, which will go through next year. Hello. Okay. Hey, I'm here with Electrify Canada. We're going to demonstrate high power DC charging today on uh, one of uh, our first chargers yep. in Canada. Excellent. So, uh, first step is always plug in first. So go ahead and open up the area on the car where we plug in the car. <laughs> plug in the car. So it clicks. Screens change. Ask you to present payment. So I've, I've pulled up on the app. You want to walk through those steps again on, on the yes, way? Please. Yep. So open up the Electrify America, uh, Electrify Canada app. It's used location data to find us. Here's the station that we're at right now. Click on that. Pulls up all the chargers that are here. We're at Charger 03. Mm -hmm. Just gonna click on that. And it's, uh, we're gonna use swipe to start. So swipe there. It's gonna process. You see the screen change on the charger? Yep. And charging begins. Once it gets going, it'll show the amount of pull that you're getting from the charge. It's supposed to. Yep. I think I saw that earlier. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so it's showing that now. Thirty-eight. Okay. Car sixty-eight percent full. Yeah. Excellent. Good. So then we can from the app or here and stop it. Cover the top of the screen. Get yeah, the charge. The charge to stop. Yep. And then I just like Scotty because every time I got it. And then we have a ten minute grace period. Really good. So you have ten minutes. Uh, you know, before you can come get your car. One of the nice features on the app is that it has a. Uh, Notification feature. So okay. you put in your contact information, yep. your, your number on there, and then it'll send you a text message. Send you a text message when it's done. So if you're inside shopping, yep. it'll notify you. Hey, your car's done. You got basically 10 minutes to come back here. Um, after the 10-minute grace period, there's a idle fee charge. Oh, okay. idle fee. Okay. So it'll start Good. to charge whatever yeah. it is, 10 or 20 cents a minute. Good. You know, so that's going to help curb the congestion that we may see as you know more have, EVs come on the road, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We had to do that. Yeah, um, for sure. To encourage people to yeah. move out of the spot, and get other other cars. I think in we're there. seeing a lot more of that now. Um, is there any interoperability with any of the carriers as far as carrying, uh, you know, uh, having a membership here, being able to use it with some of the other providers as well? Um, there is. is uh, there is. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely future plans to allow okay. you know using um, other apps and, and other. Uh, Companies to yep. be able to use here at the Electrify Canada stations. Yep. Excellent. But uh, no announcements on that yet. But Great. Will well, be. a nice seamless experience, and I look forward to uh, seeing these uh, more operation. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.
to this very important event uh, for us today at Volkswagen Group Canada. Over a year ago, the Volkswagen Group announced the formation of Electrify Canada. At that time, we were proud to announce the newly formed company was not just to give a place for our customers to charge their vehicles, but also set an example on how important it is to have emission-free mobility. Today we celebrate the official first charging station um, out of 32 that will be coming across Canada to develop our network. As part of this commitment to electric mobility, it represents the first phase that we hope will be even a greater effort, not only from our company, but from other OEMs. It's no longer the question if electric vehicles are coming, but it's the question of when electric vehicles are coming. By helping to build a nationwide network of charging stations, we are proud to say that the time is now. These charging stations will be provided for our vehicles, Volkswagen Group, will be Volkswagen, Porsche and Audi, but also all other manufacturers. And that's our commitment to really driving the importance of emission-free mobility. All right, guys, well, I'm here in the boardroom at Toronto uh, Premium Outlet Malls because it's so windy, as you've seen by some of the footage from the announcement today. So we wanted to get out of the wind and be able to ask a few questions with Robert Barossa and Laurie-Ann Roxburgh of uh, your VW's uh, CEO and acting president in Canada. If I got that right? CFO. CFO as well. Okay. So you've got many titles. I'm just the acting president. Acting and, and president. Yes. Okay. And, and Robert, you're, you're the CEO of Electrify yep. Canada. Great. Well, and again, uh, you know, some of the folks have already seen some of the announcement footage, uh, but it was kind of windy. So what I wanted to do is maybe bring it back and ask a few questions that we can get uh, in a little nicer environment. So, you know, thanks for setting this up. I mean, I'm, as, as my viewers know, I've been stoked about electric, both Electrify America and Electrify Canada for yeah. some time, waiting for these things to come up because we do need more infrastructure. Um, and, you know, Rob, tell us, how, you know, how long has this been planning? I mean, you said about a year, but... I, probably goes back a bit more because there's a lot of work involved in putting this together, right? Yeah, absolutely. And probably Lorianne was probably in, in some of the earlier stuff. But but really, as, as the brands were coming to market, right, the, the need for infrastructure was there and there was a lot of stuff going on, on the U.S. side. So the two teams got together and started formulating how can we get this together and get an investment done in Canada and then work back through uh, Volkswagen Germany to put the business plan together and, and secure the funding to go ahead and, and uh, build out the infrastructure and Electrify Canada was, was born about a little over a year ago mm -hmm. uh, and now we're here. And to be honest, there. I thought it was older. So yeah. was only a year? Wow. That's yeah. a, a lot's happened. In yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've been fortunate because of the America side and all the work they've done, we've been able to leverage a lot of the technology and other things and bring okay. it here to the Canadian market. So it's really allowed us to expand quickly uh, and we'll continue to expand uh, quickly as we go forward. And I guess that process as well, you know, some people don't realize it's a big undertaking to, you know, to find a site, to do all that business analysis, not only the business side, but also where it's going to be the most beneficial for users. Right, That's exactly. What you, want. you want people to use these things. Exactly. Um, to be able to go from A to B. And all that analysis, find your sites, the permitting. I mean, what's that whole process yeah. like? Uh, it's a very long process. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a big afro but, before this yeah. started? No. No, that's a few less gray yeah. hairs, maybe. <laughs> exactly. um, but certainly, yeah, well, yeah, the way we start out is it's really talking with the brands, uh, not only our own brands, right. but other brands and the general public and looking at demographics, looking at traffic patterns and trying to lay out where is, where, what kind of infrastructure is needed and where. Right? And we kind of lay out that map and start looking for target zones. And once we know the way the target zones are, then we start looking for retail properties to, to go ahead and expand mm -hmm. uh, and start building out. Uh, yeah. And then from there, once we have several locations, then we're in, you know, we go right to the utility to start talking about, mm -hmm. okay, this is the type of loads we're bringing, where on this property can we locate, where's the power going to come in from, and so there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of planning that goes on with the utilities, uh, and that takes quite a bit of time. Yeah. 
Uh, and then once we finally got a point of connection, then we could go ahead and get all the final engineering and everything else done. Have you found any challenges with any of the utility operators across Canada in, uh, in looking at siting and, and yeah, spots? Are there some challenges? There, there are challenges. And, and spe for us, it's speed, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to get to market. We want to start driving yeah. this movement and moving well, it forward. It's a technical challenge as far as Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, the technical yeah. challenges are typically power, yeah. right? And so it's, we'll look at a particular site and um, power might be too far or there's just not enough power in that area. It's too constrained. So we'll have to look at a different property, right? But we'll look at a, a lot of options in any one target zone that we're trying to go after. And then after that, it's really about speed. How, how fast can we get the utility to move? Um, because, you know, in most cases, I'm ready to start building. Uh, I just need to know where the power is coming from and we, or where we can go. So that's where we've been working very hard and doing a lot of outreach with the different utilities to let them know that we're coming. This is what we're doing, talking to some of their executives, trying to get them on board and excited. Um, to help kind of prioritize and push these projects forward. It's, uh, it's an uphill battle, I should say, uh, a lot of competing priorities. But this is an important movement that we need to push forward. And, and so that's the message we're trying to bring to the utilities. Um, I mean, all the LDCs here in, in Ontario, as well as Hydro-Quebec and, and BC Hydro. So it's, it's probably trying to get those, those big I guys to move. I that most of the utilities are on board with this. They're all part of it. It's probably part of their future planning process yeah. anyway, so to not only support it, maybe have some small offerings. Yeah, and for some utilities, it's almost, for a lot of them, it's kind of first time they're seeing this kind of level of infrastructure going in. So you. there is yeah. a little bit of learning going on, which is great. Yeah. And, and we always want to kind of try to share experiences of what worked in other areas and what didn't. Mm -hmm. And so that they can start thinking about those processes and other things that they can start implementing to help drive infrastructure. Um, so, so it is a collaborative effort, but for us right now, it's it's all about speed. I can't I can't get yeah. people to move fast enough. <laughs> I hear it. Now you mentioned yeah. in the the kickoff, 32 locations across Canada. They're not Correct. all publicly known yet. Uh, yeah, you guys have a good idea of where they are, and as you roll them out, you'll announce. You know, there are some dots. As questions Correct. Yeah. Out there. Yep. Uh, but that and an average about four stalls per station. Is that correct? And there'll be dual CCS and Chatamo with. Most of them being 150 and 300. I, I see here one yep. of them's 50, so you've got a bit of a mix. Yeah, so um, everything is, is all plumbed for 150 and one 350 okay. kilowatt charger. The Chatamo has been restricted typically to 50 kilowatts. Yeah. They haven't gotten quite to the high power Chatamo, so we at least leave one Chatamo at 50 kilowatts. Um, but any any of those dispensers can be, so if, uh, if a high power Chatamo comes out at some day, we have the option to go ahead and upgrade that. So everything's built out for it's it. It's great to have some of the, yeah. I say older, even yeah. though it's not that old. I mean, it's Yeah, and they keep supporting the, and Nissan keeps yeah. supporting the standard. So sure. we want to make sure that we, you know, take care of the cust existing yeah. customers as well as any future customers. Um, but generally, I think across North American market, just about every automaker has embraced yeah. the CCS standard, right. uh, and that's what we see the majority going forward. Yeah, I know. I've had yeah. this conversation about Chatham versus CCS, yeah. and there's reasons why for each. <laughs> um, on that note of 32 you know, planned um, locations, and we have an election coming up in Canada not too, in the not too distant yeah. future in a few weeks, how has, because you're a national uh, uh, initiative, how has the federal government embraced and then how have you seen this role to the provincial and, and municipal levels? I mean, I know the town of... Uh, the mayor of Milton that was here, right, for the kickoff. Right. Um, how has that been? Yeah, most of our interactions have been more at the provincial level, at the mm -hmm. local level, okay. right? Um, so we did a lot of our planning, uh, kind of understood, you know, the lay of the land, yep. um, but but really been working at the local level. Um, there is some work when we're putting a station up in Ottawa, so there is some some discussions there a little bit at the federal level, okay. but but really it's been at at, okay. at the local sites, mm -hmm. um, working with all the different retail partners that are out there. Yeah. Uh, and the local utilities and, and you know, the governing board bodies, whatever they may be in, in a, any particular jurisdiction, um, to, to get that infrastructure put in. So for the most part, it's been very supportive. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, everybody's extremely supportive. Good. Um, oh, Excellent, you know, man. could always get the meeting. Yeah. Um, and, um, but, you know, it, it, this is, uh, it's all new, uh, especially at these power levels. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, trying to, to get this all built out is uh, it's a big task, and, and we're asking a lot, but, but so far it's been very, been very good. And yeah. actually, do one more uh, comment and question. I guess I, I was very impressed with the levels of accessibility as far as being able to use this uh, station yep. with different payment methods. You know, that's one of the biggest complaints that I hear is, well, i got to get a card. I gotta, you know, in my yeah. car, I've got four different, five different right. key fobs and six different apps. So yep. It's nice to be able to yeah. have a choice. Right? Yeah, that, that's been the biggest challenge, yeah. right? Everybody talks about interoperability. These people need to work with these people and get the one card. And it, it was it's always a difficult conversation, as you have yeah. with, with many different suppliers. So we just said, you know, if we put a credit card and it's a similar experience as to how you feel your card today, 
why should we do anything different? So we started there as the lowest common denominator, and then we built the app and other things. But really focused, I think, at the station when you go to our sites, right, and you go through the HMI experience, really focused on trying to lead the customer to a successful charge event uh, and making sure that they're successful every time. Because um, that can really, you know, if, if people can't figure it out or they have a lot of trouble uh, doing it, it really turns them off to EVs, right? Absolutely. And then they start spreading that and news everywhere else. Yeah, and we, and we didn't. So we spent a lot of time, a lot of time, and brought in outside resources to help us go through that user experience and make sure we got that right. Yeah. So yeah, it looked really nice. I had a demo before yeah. this, so good, pretty, pretty straightforward, and, and I love the options. So thank Great. you for that. Thank you, yep. Lorianne. Let me ask you a couple questions. I appreciate you you're taking the time to sit with me as well. Uh, again, I'm you know as we talked just before I started filming and my viewers know they get sick of me talking about VW because I talk a lot about it, but you know, I'm really stoked at what's going on with VW. Um, let's uh, keep with Electrify Canada for a sec. You know, how are you feeling about VW's involvement with all this? Uh, I mean, obviously you're, you're helping to fund a lot of, the, a lot of this, but you know, what's it gonna do for VW Canada? What's your, your take on that? Well, it's absolutely fantastic because it doesn't just do for v VW Canada, Electrify um, Canada. It, it helps us for our customers. So we have vehicles out there that we're selling now. So it's only responsible to have charging stations. And it only makes sense because we want to be very proactive and one of the leaders in really um, sharing the importance of electric vehicles and zero emissions. We all know how important that is to our future. And so Electrify Canada is the perfect option for us, as well as supporting other manufacturers who can charge at our stations. So it's not just about just our customers, it's also about electric mobility is important for the future and that's important to Volkswagen Canada. Absolutely is, and you know, I, I have, uh, folks know that I've talked to Thomas and Scott on a couple occasions and I had to tell them to hold down their excitement because it, they're just bubbling with it and it should, they should be proud, you guys all should be proud. It's a lot of hard work. And, and you know, from a VW perspective, with you know now with the launch of the ID3 in, in, in Europe, which is just gaining momentum and so much buzz, uh, and you know, of course, the buzz, which is I think going to be the ID4 or the Cross going to be the ID4, all these other things. You know, a lot of things happening. You know, you guys are taking as, as a corporation, as a big company, taking steps to really build the infrastructure to support electrification of your of your vehicles moving forward, and that goes into you know sourcing batteries and, and, and in-housing a lot. I mean. If anybody, as I, as folks know, as I know me said, that you got, anybody has the, the depth and breadth to be mass market, it's you guys. What do you, what's your take on that, too? Well, that's absolutely true. And as you know, our group is focused on that. Mm -hmm. They're investing billions of dollars in uh, research and development. Yep. And by 2040, we will be all electric vehicles. That is the goal. Yeah, that's a goal. And I think only in a few <coughs> short years, a million a year, you know, by within the next about five years, there's, there's not, I don't think it's a hard definition, but, you know, to, to pump out a million EVs a year is a big feat. It's a not easy thing. So exactly. As you spool up. Um, the anticipation for Canada, obviously for North America, the first electrified VW will be the, the Cross, which is I think now renamed the ID4, if I've got that correct, some variant of that. Um, is that still the target plan for Canada as well? Uh, that is still the target yeah. plan, but okay. again, it's, it's over time yeah. and, you know, going through the, the pricing processes yeah. of that and whether it fits for the market. And sometimes our cars are usually called something different in Canada than mm -hmm. globally. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It has to fit the market and region, the consumer. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. So okay. more to come on that topic. Of course, I know. I, I've tried to <coughs> a little nugget for some people here. I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> folks. I'm trying, folks. Um, and, you know, and that's exciting because, you know, after that, there's just going to be more of a deluge of products. I mean, obviously, yes. the, the, the van coming back. Um, and I just thought, is that the buzz? I'm trying to remember. Is that the buzz? That was called the buzz. The buzz. Is that was called the buzz? Did they change it already? Buzz. Did uh, I we'll miss see. something? We'll find out. That thing is cool. That thing. You got to stay in anticipation. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I was never a surfer, but I did live in California for a few years, and I saw a ton of those things around. So, so I get it. So, but that's exciting because so what's your what's your intended roadmap that you could see right now as far as electrification coming to Canada over the next let's say decade? What can you what can you speak to on that? Um, I guess I can just say that that is the goal and mm -hmm. that we are working towards that goal yep. and we will achieve that goal. Um, so it's just a matter of introducing the product for our markets, mm -hmm. which is also for the North American region. We're part of the North American yeah. region. So it's important that uh, we, we continue down that map, that road, uh, and we map out what vehicles make the most sense for our market because right. it's not always, you know, the vehicles built in Europe are not necessarily yes. always the right vehicles for us in the North American region. So we work very closely in the North American region with Mexico and, yeah. and Volkswagen of America. And uh, yeah, and from there we determine, you know, what's going to make the most sense for us in right. Canada. Right. So you guys will be excited with these vehicles. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. And, and even down, I, I, I say that because sometimes when you go to some dealers, and not just VW, across the board, 
um, you know, with the exception of maybe Tesla, some of these dealers aren't that excited to, to sell somebody an electric vehicle when they've got, you know, a nice SUV or some of the other product in stock. Um, so that excitement, you know, with this new transition, is that going to be taken down to the dealers? What's your, what's your plan for that? Oh, absolutely. You know? But I think, you know, like I was saying earlier today, it's a big change in our industry. It is, yeah. And it's not just for dealers and yeah. for our employees, it's also for the consumer. Um, to really think about moving away from gas vehicles, mm -hmm. you know, and the convenience of that. Yes. Um, it's really about how important uh, no emissions uh, future is to all of mm -hmm. us. And so, of course, that's why we're very excited that we're on the edge of that and that we're being proactive in building the infrastructure and also bringing as many cars to market as possible um, mm -hmm. over the next years. Um, so our dealers, I mean, it's a big adjustment for everybody. Yeah. So I think we all are going through that change. Yeah. And like Rob was just sharing some of the things they're learning and we're learning and yeah. the utilities companies are learning. I mean, True. it's yeah. a learning Consumers environment learning. Yeah. and we're yeah. right on a yeah. major change in our industry. Well, as folks don't heard me say, you know, it's a 100, 100 year industry, right? Yeah, and we're, exactly. we're trying to shift this big giant boat around and it takes time to make that turn. Um, and it'll take many years, but it's a good direction to be going forward with, absolutely. Happy with that, Robert, any, uh, Robert, any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're, we're excited to be in this space and finally open. Um, so you're going to see continue to see a lot of great things from Electrify Canada. We're going to continue to expand and build out our 32 stations and, and go from there and really focus on the customers, providing the right kind of infrastructure and building that education and that awareness to help build the movement and keep it going. Excellent. Well, certainly, if you're, if you're, if you're coming by TPO and using the, using the stations, and uh, let me know your feedback. Let me know what your experience. And as you come across... Uh, more stations that come online over the next several months or so because you're, you're, it's a year rollout you mentioned. It's yep. front, a, an ambitious plan. Please send me feedback because uh, I can always forward it on to you. Well, <laughs> you know, try to make a real experience. But anyway, so, thank you very much for your time. I yeah. appreciate okay. it quite a lot. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of uh, EV Revolution Show number 63, focusing on the launch of the Electrify Canada first charging hub here in Canada. Thank you again to the folks for inviting me over. Uh, it was a great event. Uh, very happy to be part of that momentous occasion as they look to expand the network out. And again, thank you everybody for watching, for um, submitting comments, uh, subscribing, liking, on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm, I continue to be very pleased at the activity that I see on YouTube and the continued growth that I'm experiencing. My goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year if I can, really hoping to kind of achieve that milestone. Um, so if you can help me out, if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate it a lot if you did and pass the word around about my show. I know folks I'm not perfect, I know folks I sometimes stumble and bumble in my speaking and uh, using acronyms and uh, different ways of saying things because I do get feedback on that and and that's just me that's just who I am folks uh, I'm not the most polished guy out there uh, I'm just trying to make a difference in a meaningful way and everything that you see from me is very sincere and comes from me um, I'm not one of these uh, you know TV stars trying to trying to make a living doing this I am just trying to make a difference and do something for the cause of spurring EV adoption so that's who I am so you know I appreciate critique uh, but this is who I am, folks. I will try to, I always try to better myself, of course. And on that note, I'm always deeply humbled and say thank you for my Patreon supporters because it really means a lot to have uh, support. The, there is a lot of effort that goes into doing what I do here, even though it's a part-time thing for me. I have a full-time job uh, and a family to take care of, but um, you know, I, I try to grow the video quality, grow what I cover and grow the frequency of these. And it takes time. There's a large amount of time every week and every month that I spend on this. So uh, financial support is greatly appreciated. I'll be going to Fully Charged Live in Austin in February. And, and as always, you know, uh, continue to engage and watch the show um, and continue to go out there. Uh, on, and there's a lot of folks I know that are uh, engaged in the public as well that do a lot of their parts of clubs and, and all kinds of different elements in the EV landscape. And I, I appreciate very much what you folks do as well, because it really is not just me or one person uh, that has to go out there and shout about the um, abilities and the likelihood that EVs can fit into more use cases than they would have before and that they will continue to fit into grow into even more as the future progresses. So until the next show, which will be coming up soon, everybody please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.